Jewish tradition ascribes the book of Lamentations to the prophet Jeremiah. However, scholars differ on that. The book is a collection of poetic laments written contemporaneously with the destruction of Jerusalem. As the Babylonian army advanced through the land of Judah, the word went out that the people must go to the fortified cities. So the population of the cities increased exponentially. People were everywhere. Overpopulation is an issue that comes with many problems. While Jerusalem had an internal water supply, food was limited to whatever supplies the city had stored up for such an emergency as this. Regardless of how the leaders rationed the finite supply of food, it was going to run out. Now you say they should have had stored grain in their bins, but stored grain was soon rendered useless. Think about it. Stored grain is hard. It has to be cooked, and thus the people had to have firewood to fuel the fire to cook it. Obviously, wood was not plentiful inside the fortified walls. The city is under siege for two years, so by the fifth chapter, the city is but a shell of its former self. The children no longer play in the streets. They beg. The rich no longer have lavish banquets. They scrounge for food. The king is blinded, captured, and taken away after seeing his sons killed. So chapter 5 is a communal prayer, a national plea to God from people who are in their most desperate situation. The prophet urges the Lord to remember them, to see what has occurred to his people. Now, this is a bit ironic given the fact that the prophet recognizes this plight is a result of their decision to stray from God. He says so in verse 7. In the first lament in chapter 5, he states, We are the heirs of the Abrahamic covenant, but now we are without property. Others, foreigners, occupy it. We are in a state of helplessness. The necessities of life are scarce, and we pay for that which we need for our very life. Society has devolved into a state where people die because they are too poor to live. He continues saying, the invaders continue to seek out and oppress us, and we now are too weak and too tired to continue running. Once a strong nation, we now look to heathen nations to provide us the necessities of life. In the second lamentation in chapter 5, he states, We are lower than slaves, and there is no hope of deliverance. Our existence is precarious facing famine and hunger and the breakdown of societal norms and protections, we risk our lives just to eat. As an intern with USAID, I spent some time in a nation undergoing the Sahelian drought, and that was beyond words. But this writer is now in even more dire a situation, and he is writing to an all-knowing God about the plight his nation is in. By doing so, it helps him to talk through the problem, and he says, we are sick from malnutrition. Our women are raped. Our leaders have been humiliated. Our elders no longer are in place to share their wisdom there is endless work for those that are strong and no joy is in this city. And he admits that it is because of sin. The result of long-term strain and stress is depression among the people. But out of that despair does not come desperation, but rather praise. So at the end of our lesson, we see a tribute plea to Yahweh. Confessing that Yahweh is sovereign, the prophet also requests that he will not abandon his nation, but restore them. The prophet asked Yahweh, why is he forsaking his covenant people for so long? Now, some would wonder why the writer is questioning God. But if the truth be known, we as modern Christians sometimes 
ask why in the deep recesses of our mind. Sometimes the only way to deepen our understanding of God is to ask why. But let's be truthful. That's the time we're most likely to look in the mirror at ourselves, seeing our own flaws. That's the time we're most open to explore the explanation that God will give us. And that is the most likely time for us to accept God's true word. But even as he questions God, the writer maintains his faith. For in the very next verse, he petitions Yahweh to restore Israel. But he adds one caveat to that request. He says, unless God has totally rejected the nation. Like modern Christian, the prophet believes, but in the midst of the anguish, he is still wondering if God is inclined to save him this time. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week. Bye.